Welcome, adventurers. Today, I've prepared a modding guide video to help you completely rebuild Oblivion. After years of modding and playing Oblivion, I've revisited my knowledge and refined the information from my previous guide videos to create this one. I hope this video will be helpful to you. Let's get started. Before we begin, this guide will be based on using Mod Organizer 2. As you download various mods from Nexus Mods or other sites, you should continue to install them using the same method in Mod Organizer. However, please note that any INI or OBSE folders within the downloaded mods need to be placed directly into the folder where Oblivion is installed. Because I am currently using Mod Organizer 2.4.4 and it seems that this version does not recognize INI and OBSE folders. Please keep this in mind. First, we need to improve Oblivion's engine system. Since its release in 2006, Oblivion's game engine has faced many technical limitations due to its use of a 32-bit engine, resulting in low memory usage. During gameplay, if memory runs low, black texture issues can randomly occur, and if you continue playing in this state, it can lead to CTDs, causing constant frustration. To increase the number of mods you can use in Oblivion, you need to boost the memory usage, and the Oblivion 4GB RAM patcher can be one of the solutions. This utility applies a 4GB patch to the .x and .dll files related to Oblivion's executable, allowing the game to use more memory. This patch can particularly improve performance on systems with more than 4GB of RAM. Copy the .exa file to the root directory of the Oblivion game folder, run it as an administrator, then select the Oblivion EXA file and the OBC loader file with administrator privileges and click Confirm. This patch automatically creates a backup of the original files, so you can revert to the original state if needed. Next, there's Oblivion Reloaded Combined, a mod that significantly enhances the graphics and performance of Oblivion. It offers advanced shaders and visual effects similar to ENB, greatly improving the game's graphics. It also includes various optimization features to enhance frame rates, reduce stuttering, and offers additional features like real-time distant grid adjustments, immersive camera, HDR plus MSAA support, and more. Additionally, you can use OBSE plugins like Engine Bug Fixes and Blue's Oblivion Engine Fixes to address bugs or CTDs that occur when using certain script commands. Plugins like Oblivion Stutter Remover can improve the game's stability and smooth out frame rates, making Oblivion more enjoyable and stable. Furthermore, Oblivion display tweaks can optimize the graphics and performance of Oblivion, resolving minor stuttering issues in-game, addressing problems that occur at high frame rates, and fixing game freezes when using Alt-Tab in full-screen mode. These four mods are plugins, so you should try installing them with a mod organizer. If they don't apply correctly, you may need to place them directly into the Oblivion installation folder as mentioned earlier. Next, let's talk about the interface and camera. Just like in 2023, I am using Coffee UI and Loot Menu based on Northern UI in 2024. The main reason for this is that Northern UI supports gamepads. If you don't like the yellow borders of Coffee UI, you can simply use Northern UI alone. However, my in 2024, I'm with I you. added the follower status mod to monitor my follower status in real time. This mod displays the status of companions and summoned creatures on the screen. It shows the name, health, magicka, fatigue, and equipped weapon of companions and summoned creatures in the upper left corner of the screen. Since it supports Northern UI, it works well together. Additionally, Using better enemy health enhances the experience. This mod provides a more detailed display of enemy health bars, using the same interface as the player's health bar, instead of the default arc texture. It shows the enemy's name, health value, and level. This mod is also compatible with Northern UI and displays the information just below the compass, creating a clean interface. By default, it is disabled, but during combat, the enemy interface appears below the compass. Additionally, I used simple primary needs and status bars for needs together. 
The Simple Primary Needs mod provides a basic needs system in Oblivion, offering simple and balanced bonuses for eating, drinking, and sleeping. Although it doesn't distinguish between eating and drinking, I found it sufficient for connecting with the food needs system. Lastly, I decorated the loading screen interface using the Community Loading Screens mod. This mod replaces Oblivion's loading screens with high-resolution images and custom loading menus. It includes loading screens from both the base game and the Shivering Isles expansion, adding over 100 new loading screens. Personally, I use the classic version, but you can choose the full screen or regal version according to your preference. Northern UI is somewhat integrated with the camera system. When used together with Walk Blessed, you can experience a perfect shoulder view. Personally, I have customized the view to play with a gamepad in shoulder view mode. I use the third view camera distance changer to limit the third person view distance and the Walk Blessed feature to position the character in the lower left corner. When you draw your weapon, the focus zooms in, and when you sheathe it, the camera distance increases. By double-clicking the Z key, you can use the shoulder swap feature to move the character from the lower left to the lower right corner. I would like to share this preset with you. You can install Walk Blessed first through the link in the description and then apply my preset. Next, let's talk about the environment. In 2023, I used All Natural along with Grass Overhaul, but in 2024, I switched to Monkey Grass. This mod is based on Grass Overhaul and Oblivion Grass Overhaul. Atlas textures, providing denser and higher quality grass compared to Grass Overhaul. Additionally, I added the Harvest Flora mod, which makes plants disappear when harvested. In Vanilla Oblivion, plants remain even after being harvested, breaking immersion. With this mod, plants disappear upon harvesting, enhancing immersion. For water, I switch to Enhanced Water V20, which offers more realistic watercolors, reflections, waves, and ripples compared to the original. I also added better lava to improve the texture of lava frequently seen inside Oblivion Gates, making it more realistic and vibrant. I've also enhanced the distant landscapes using the Landscape LOD Textures mod. This mod improves the distant views in both Oblivion and Shivering Isles. It significantly enhances visual quality without greatly impacting performance, making it a very satisfying addition. I am using an ENB created by a Korean creator, which is available on a Korean site rather than Test Nexus. I am quite satisfied with it. Although I am sharing it via Google Drive, it may become unavailable at any time upon the original creator's request. Of course, there may be other ENB with even better color schemes. I would appreciate any information you can share about ENB. And I have improved Oblivion's magic visual effects using the Magic Visuals Overhaul mod. This mod adds particle effects to magic projectiles and enchanted bows and arrows, making them visually more spectacular. Despite the numerous shaders applied to each projectile, which generate many particles simultaneously, the mod maintains high performance and stability during regular gameplay. This allows for a more immersive and dynamic magical combat experience in Oblivion. Lastly, I included the Real Lights mod to replace in-game light sources with actual light sources, creating more realistic interior lighting. This time, it's an overhaul mod, and it's the highlight of today's video. Wallex Animals and Creatures also known as WAC. This mod significantly adds and improves the creatures and animals in Oblivion. Through this mod, I was able to greatly enhance the game's immersion by adding a variety of new creatures, animals, NPCs, and items. First, the WAC mod introduces numerous new creatures and animals to the game. Each of these has unique behavior patterns and abilities, making the gameplay more diverse. Additionally, new weapons, armor, and clothing are added, allowing players to use a wider variety of equipment. While there are many excellent mods like Mardigan's Monster Mod, Oscuro's Oblivion Overhaul, or Francesco's Creatures and Items, I highly recommend that viewers of my video try Walex Animals and Creatures. If I could, 
I would shake you by the shoulders and tell you to use Wallex animals and creatures. <laughs> However, while I recommend this mod, there are definitely issues such as CTDs occurring in specific situations or when fast traveling to certain locations. In fact, considering stability, it might be difficult to use this mod. But in terms of quality, there is no mod like WAC. Personally, after using this, it's hard to play without it. But I suggest you back up your game first, apply the mod, and if bugs or conflicts occur, remove this mod and try building your mod list with mods like MOO. Additionally, you can convert the armors from Walex animals and creatures to the EBE Light Guts body or DMRA Guts form using the WAC, Female Armor Refine Mod and WAC Armors, and robes for DMRA Guts. In this section, I'll cover sound-related mods. First, Gecko's Oblivion Sound Overhaul significantly enhances the game's audio. It makes weapon collision sound, magic effects, and footsteps more immersive. Additionally, it improves natural environment sounds like wind, water, and animal noises, making the overall sound experience in Oblivion much more realistic. The Sounds of Cyrodiil mod adds over 250 new sound effects to the world of Oblivion, affecting every cell and region in the game. This allows players to hear a variety of sounds in all environments, including cities, dungeons, and the wilderness. For example, in cities, you can hear people shouting during the day, doors opening and closing, and workers sawing. At night, you might hear cats fighting, dogs barking, and drunk people shouting. In the wilderness, you can hear birds chirping and waves crashing against the shore. In dungeons, depending on the type of enemies, you can hear zombies groaning, spirits wailing, and daedric voices. This greatly enhances immersion, making the world of oblivion feel more alive and dynamic. In this section, we will introduce mods related to immersion. First, there's Interact Animations. This mod adds animations when the player interacts with objects in Oblivion. For example, animations play when eating food, consuming ingredients, or drinking potions, as well as when opening doors. Although it only supports third-person view, it is still considered an essential feature and includes gamepad support for Northern UI. However, when using the loot menu, there is an issue where the looting animation plays and the item menu opens when acquiring items. To resolve this, you need to find the value in the video settings and set it to zero to disable the animation when looting containers. Next up is Look Hear You. This mod makes your character's head turn to face the direction of the camera when you rotate the view in third person. In vanilla game, the character's head remains fixed to the body. But with this mod, the character's face will turn to look at the direction of the camera, enhancing immersion. Next up is the See You Sleep mod. This mod allows your character to lie down and sleep in a bed with a sleeping animation. When you activate a bed, your character will lie down, and activating it again will bring up the sleep menu. It is compatible with most custom bed mods, and is one of the mods that can enhance immersion. Next up is CLS Crafty Bits, an incredible mod that adds comprehensive crafting features to Oblivion. This mod allows you to craft and repair weapons and armor, make and mend clothes, and cook a variety of dishes. Each bowl, spoon, and knife can be transformed into various tools by pressing the CLS hotkey, which is set to the P key by default. You can change the hotkey by using the settings item. To explain how to cook, place a bowl on the ground and press the hotkey to turn it into a mixing bowl. Then add water and flour to the bowl. Pick up a spoon by pressing the Z key and bring it to the bowl to get a message that you can make dough. After making the dough, drop four pieces of wood on the ground. Move them to the desired position and press the hotkey to turn the wood into firewood. Use a fire spell on the firewood to light it. 
Next, press the hotkey on the bowl to turn it into a cooking plate. Grab the cooking plate by pressing the Z key and bring it near the firewood. The firewood will recognize the cooking plate, and you can place the dough on the plate to bake it. After about 30 minutes of game time, the dough will turn into bread. If you are using the previously mentioned needs mod, you can play with a survival concept by cooking and eating food in real time. This mod not only allows you to make bread, but also lets you place a cheese wheel on a cutting board and cut it into eight pieces with a knife. Roast corn and follow numerous other recipes. Typically, when you download the mod, you can study all the cooking recipes through the included CB reference guide PDF file, which adds to the fun of cooking and eating in the game. Cooking is just a small part of CLS Crafty Bits. You can also engage in woodcrafting with an axe. When you stand in front of a tree with an axe, the name of each tree will be displayed in the upper left corner. By attacking the tree with the axe, you can obtain a wood stave. Place the wood stave on the ground, pick it up by pressing the Z key, and attack it again with the axe to get firewood, which is the same wood I used to start a fire earlier. This way, you can collect wood staves in the field and use them to start fires. Conversely, if you attack a tree with a dagger, you can strip the bark. After a certain number of hits, you'll hear the sound of the bark being stripped and see a message. At this point, switch to a one-handed axe and attack the tree to obtain a wood plank. Place the wood plank on the ground and attack it with the dagger to craft items like wooden boards, utility boards, tools, slats, or even chairs. You can create furniture this way and arrange it for actual use. While blocking, press the Activate key to add the furniture to your inventory. In this way, you can craft numerous pieces of furniture using this mod. The detailed recipes for each piece of furniture can be found in the previously mentioned CB Reference Guide. With these recipes, you can create a wide variety of items from large tents to various beds, wardrobes, and even a moving canoe. Now, let's talk about butchering. In CLS Crafty Bits, you can skin animal carcasses by grabbing them with the grab key and attacking them with a dagger. Sometimes, in addition to hides, you can obtain animal fat, horns, or scraps, which can be used as materials for other crafting recipes. Once the first stage of skinning is complete, you can proceed to dismember the carcass into various parts. By continuously attacking the carcass with a dagger while holding it, you can break it down into pieces. If you are skilled, you can obtain extra meat. If not, you may end up with bones, which can be used to craft items like bone arrows. This way, you can hunt and butcher animals in the wild to obtain meat, cook it over a fire, and use bones to craft bows or arrows, experiencing a primitive survival lifestyle. In addition to the features mentioned earlier, you can repair equipment with a hammer, dig the ground and plant seeds with a shovel, raise bees and harvest honey, catch fish with a net, hunt creatures with traps, and mine ores with a pickaxe to craft armor and weapons. The endless functionalities of this mod can expand the life-related content in Oblivion so extensively that you could play the game for a year with just this mod alone. Moreover, the mod's approach of directly grabbing objects and having the player use tools to craft items makes it feel like you are actively participating in the crafting process. This innovative mod allows players to experience a new way of life in Cyrodiil. Next up is Smart Greeting. This mod makes NPC greetings in Oblivion more realistic. Instead of simply removing greetings or increasing the greeting intervals, it works more intelligently. 
For example, NPCs will only greet the player when they make eye contact. The greeting interval increases from the default 20 seconds to 10 minutes. Additionally, if the player stands near an NPC for a long time outdoors, the NPC will greet the player, providing a more immersive experience while exploring Cyrodiil. In this segment, I will introduce a few combat-related mods. Although I don't use many combat mods, here are a few worth mentioning. First up is Dynamic Oblivion Combat. This mod enhances Oblivion's melee combat system, making battles more dynamic, varied, and deep. It introduces new features to the combat mechanics for both players and enemies, maintaining the balance and feel of combat while making it more engaging. The mod adds the ability to block enemy attacks with precise timing, improves reactions when blocking attacks, and introduces dodge moves that both players and enemies can use. It also enhances combat functions by adding attacks and defenses using shields, and even includes attacks targeting legs and heads. Additionally, the AI is improved to predict and respond to the player's repetitive attack and defense moves. The mod adds various elements such as combat styles, strategies, and weapon usage, making Oblivion's combat more interesting and challenging. Next up is Stagger Recoil and Hit Stop. This mod was introduced in 2023, and I'm introducing it again this year. To reintroduce it, this mod provides three main features. First, it adjusts the length of the staggering animation when an enemy is hit. The length of the stagger depends on whether the enemy is blocking, hit by an arrow, hit by a melee attack, or if the attacker is performing a power attack. This feature applies to all characters. Additionally, it adjusts the length of the recoil animation when the attacker performs a power attack. This feature also applies to all characters. Lastly, when the player attacks an enemy, or the enemy attacks the player, time slows down significantly for a moment. This allows you to feel the impact of the weapon or fist hitting the enemy more clearly. In my case, I use this mod to apply the hit stop effect. I have especially added the hit stop effect during power attacks to make combat more dynamic. Features like stagger can cause enemies to stagger too frequently, leading to battles being decided by preemptive strikes. Therefore, you may want to disable this feature in the mod's INI file. However, I prefer using Stagger, so you can just take this as a reference. Now I'm starting to reach my physical limits and feeling quite exhausted, but I will do my best to introduce you to the best mods for Oblivion modding until the very end. First up, we have the Carl's Texture Pack 3 Redomized mod. This mod is a reduced and optimized version of Carl's Texture Pack 3 designed to enhance the visual quality of Oblivion while minimizing performance issues. It includes high-resolution textures for architecture, landscapes, rocks, furniture, and more, making the game world look sharper and more detailed. Next, we have the Aeliad Ruins Renewed mod. This mod breathes new life into the ancient Aeliad Ruins by removing the damage of age and restoring the stone and ironwork to their original splendor. Experience the ruins as the Aeliads themselves would have seen them. Next, we have the Caves Retexture mod. This mod retextures the caves with stunning HD textures, making your underground adventures more immersive than ever. Choose between the 1K and 2K versions to fit your system's performance. Moving on, we have the Fort's Ruins Retexture mod. This mod enhances the exteriors of Fort Ruins with high-quality 2K textures, giving these ancient structures a fresh and detailed look. Now, let's take a look at Kavach HD. This mod enhances the city of Kavach with HD textures, making it look more vibrant and detailed. If you've installed other high-res texture mods, make sure to replace them with this one for the best experience. Last but not least, we have the TD Hooter, Oblivion Farms Retexture mod. This mod presents a new farm texture in the style of Ukrainian mud huts, complete with optional mossy roofs and new window textures. In this section, I'd like to introduce a few city and village mods. First up is Better Cities. When it comes to Oblivion, Better Cities is almost universally popular for city expansion mods, making it difficult to recommend anything else. 
This mod enhances and expands all cities in Oblivion, except for Kavach. You can choose to apply it to individual cities or use the integrated plugin. However, the biggest issue with this mod is the frame drop. In my case, I installed it excluding Breville and Leowin, and the frame rate in Breville was too low, so I excluded these two cities. However, if you use it together with lossless scaling, which I introduced for Skyrim, you can enjoy smooth gameplay in cities even with this mod. Next up is the Imperial City Suburbs model. This mod adds a new village around the Imperial City, specifically under and around the Talos Bridge. It includes two inns, a purchasable house, government buildings, stables, a forest with beautiful views, and an open market to explore. This mod transforms the outskirts of the Imperial City into a residential area, making it an even more beautiful place. Next up is Solace. This mod adds a unique tree city to Oblivion. It introduces a village northeast of Leowin, featuring an imaginative, tree-friendly community floating in the sky. The village includes a player-owned house and boasts a distinctive architectural style that enhances the beauty of Cyrodiil. I thought it would be a great addition to share with you. This section is about characters. While there haven't been significant changes since 2023, it's important to highlight this essential mod once again. The Oblivion Character Overhaul mod comprehensively enhances the appearance of characters in Oblivion. It introduces new face shapes, skin textures, normal maps, eye textures, and new hairstyles, covering all races in the game and significantly upgrading their looks. Rather than simply making characters more handsome or beautiful, it transforms them to be more realistic and unique improving the quality of low-resolution faces. His makes it an essential mod for Oblivion modding. Lastly, while not essential, here are some mods that are good to know about. First up is the Oblivion XP update. This mod is a complete update of Sir Frederick's original Oblivion XP mod, fixing various bugs and optimizing scripts to take advantage of the latest version of the Oblivion script extender. With this mod, the traditional skill leveling system is replaced with an RPG-style experience point system. Ah, you can earn experience I'm points no through great. various actions such as completing quests, defeating monsters, unlocking chests, and discovering new locations. When you level up, you can use points to enhance your desired skills and attributes. Unlike the original system where skills improve through use, this system allows you to gain experience through actions and allocate points upon leveling up, making Oblivion's leveling system more intuitive and enjoyable. Next up is the Minimap Reboot. This mod adds a small minimap to Oblivion's HUD, alleviating the inconvenience of constantly opening the local map to check your current location in caves or dungeons. You can customize the minimap's position, size, and zoom to suit your preferences. It also displays active quest targets in both world and local views, making gameplay much more convenient. Next up is Enhanced Hotkeys. This mod significantly improves the hotkey functionality in Oblivion. With this mod, you can set up to 40 hotkeys and use up to four wheels, allowing for a total of 160 hotkeys. You can assign items to up to 40 hotkeys, and even assign multiple items to a single hotkey to cycle through or use simultaneously. This will greatly enhance your Oblivion gameplay experience. Next up is Droplit Torches OBSE. This mod allows you to drop lit torches, illuminating your surroundings even when you're not holding them. The default hotkey is set to zero, but you can customize it using the provided INI file. This feature is particularly useful in dark areas where you might want to use a shield, staff, or greatsword, while still having the torchlight up your surroundings. Next up is the One Touch Dodge mod. This mod simplifies dodging in Oblivion by allowing you to perform dodge actions easily, using a combination of movement keys and hotkeys. You can also double tap the movement keys to dodge quickly. Additionally, you can set the acrobatics level required to use the dodge, making it an essential mod for convenient dodging. 
Thank you for watching our Oblivion Rebuild Guide 2024. We truly appreciate you sticking with us through this lengthy video. We hope it has enriched your Oblivion modding knowledge. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking, subscribing, and sending a super chat to support our content creation. Donations through Patreon are also greatly appreciated. We wish you the best of luck with your modding endeavors, and look forward to seeing you in our next video with even more exciting content. Happy modding, and may your adventures in Tamriel be epic. See you in the next video.